When I was a kid, my mom did the craft fair circuit. She made adorable custom hair bows and cross-stitching masterpieces to sell. I remember them very clearly. And with my books, I've just not followed in her footsteps. I think I'm just so nervous about outdoor markets and the weather, or what if no one buys anything? So I have not given them a shot. A month or so ago, one of my Booksta book talk buddies, Harriet Ashford, did her first market and she sold out. It was amazing. Harriet was trying to post a video on Book Talk of all of her tips um, and experience in one video on her channels, um, but it kept timing out because she had so many great tips. So I said, why don't you record something for my channel um, on YouTube and then you can get all of your tips out in one long video and then I'll learn something and maybe stop dragging my feet on the strategy. Win-win. So that's today's video. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK. I'm an author and I love sharing my insights about all things books and publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's topic, don't forget to subscribe. You'll be notified when I put out new videos every week about publishing, make a career to being an author, and now being a mompreneur. For those of you who've been following my channel, you know I've been self-publishing since 2015, but in 2023, I did sign with an agent to try and get my first book traditionally published, um, which is very exciting, and I will have so many updates on that journey for you. At the beginning of every video, I'm letting you know, is this for self-publishing authors or traditionally publishing authors or both or neither? I would say today's video is much more targeted towards self-publishing authors because Harriet self-published. Um, I know some of the topics I'll add in um, and tips that I'll reiterate are from my time self-publishing. I believe when you're traditionally published, you can also do some of these markets and fairs, but I believe the publisher is sending the books ahead, maybe paying some of the fees. I don't actually know um, because I haven't done it yet. So if you're a traditionally published author, comment below with your tips and if these are also accurate for you. Now, direct sales can be an amazing way to earn a higher royalty for the author and build a solid connection with your fans and your community. Selling at a market, you may not make as much because you obviously have the table cost, um, any other costs associated with being there, like if you have to bring a separate Wi-Fi router or if you had to pay for whatever um, cash app set up for being able to take payments. Um, but you can still connect with your fans and that is amazing. So let's dive into some of Harriet's top tips. Hey everyone, my name is Harriet Ashford. I'm the author of The Trouble With Love and Ink and MK invited me on her channel to talk a little bit about my first experience of selling at a farmer's market. I had a great experience with my first time selling. I sold out. Granted, I only had 20 copies of my book, but if you're an indie author, you know that 20 books in a day is pretty good. Okay, I love this. So the volume of books. So keep in mind how much you're willing to cart in um, and potentially have to carry away. Um, now, obviously, Harriet sold out of all of her books, but she still had a lot of the shelving and other items to have to cart home. So when I sold at a conference in 2019. I flew there, so I had to fly with all my books up. I had them in my carry-on backpack because there was no way I was going to check those and risk those being lost. Um, so I knew I needed to sell out because I was not going to break my back carrying them all back uh, in my backpack through TSA, all of that. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are going to a fair or a market um, somewhere else, you would either have to fly with them or potentially send them ahead. There's usually going to be, if it's at a conference center, a window um, for you to be able to have your books arrive to the conference center. Um, and there will be a shipping address specifically for that. Um, now, if for some reason you're like, I don't know if it'll get there in that exact window and you have an author buddy who's attending and maybe driving, maybe call them up and say, hey, can I just ship my books to your house and you drive them there and then I'll buy you a coffee? that first morning of the conference. Um, so that is one way I've seen authors do this before. I did have a lot working towards my favor and I wanted to share some of those things so that maybe you can get some things working towards your favor as well. The thing I really enjoyed was my setup. And when I do a farmer's market again, I'm going to do something quite similar to it. Here are some of my favorite signs that I feel like kind of sold my book for me. I had this, which of course has ratings on it so that they could see that Oh, people are enjoying it and I also um, had this printed and it has my elevator pitch and lists of tropes and then they could scan it for more information I didn't see anyone scan it maybe they did but I didn't see anyone do that um, lots of people were reading this one and the funny thing is I spent quite a bit of money not a I guess not like a it didn't break the bank but I spent a good chunk of change on this one I printed on Vistaprint this, <laughs> I just had a piece of it. I just printed it at the house. I had this cardboard at the house. I had this book at the house. We just kind of made our own sign here. And I'm telling you, this is the one people were looking at. Um, I would definitely have something just really quick that people could, could see, you know, just get the gist of your book. 
I also had my cute letter board out there that people were laughing at and it I was giving away free cookies um, and it said buy a book get a free cookie caution cookie sweet book spicy and it was kind of a twofold thing right because it was you know getting people's attention about the book also but warning them about um, the level of spice people thought that was so funny um, the thing is I had my baker friend make these cookies this time I'm not gonna have that every time I think I will try to include some sort of spice saying on there just because it got people's attention. Okay, yes, cookies. So I see absolutely why she had a professional baker prepare these for her. You know, having a really nice fancy branded cookie next to your book for photos. Amazing. Um, I also think a nice classic chocolate chip cookie from your grocery bakery section does the trick. Um, if you want to be extra fancy, absolutely go for it. But people love free stuff. People love cookies do that. Um, again, for my 2019 FinCon experience, um, it wasn't a market, it was a conference, but I used the conference app and the closed Facebook page to not only promote my time at that booth, but that I had baked fresh cookies in my Airbnb and I had candy and you can bat everybody stop by for that. <laughs> and letterboard, the letterboard was uh, like five bucks at five below. So one thing that I would absolutely love to have one day, but I'm just going to have to budget for it, is one of those really tall vinyl signs, um, one of vinyl banners. And I would put this information out front so that way they could kind of decide without having to interact with people. You know how you have that shopper who loves to interact and wants to talk with you, and then you have the other shoppers who just, like, I just want to make a decision in peace, and then if I want it, I'll come see you. Like, I think I think this would be really good for them. Um, as it is right now, I'm probably going to use, I have a big chalkboard sign, and instead I'll probably just list the tropes until I can budget for that. I also think about a way to display prices and to kind of hold your signs up. I also use this, I had a bookshelf to hold up the books, which was really cute, just a little bookshelf, and then I had my books displayed on these as well so they could see the front. I bought these on Amazon. They came with a bunch of them, super cheap. You don't need to spend an arm and a leg on things like that. Now, one thing I will say here is for payments. Um, now, when I did this before, I had a Stripe card reader and the Stripe app as well as cash on hand. Um, I don't know if it's a generational thing. I think as a millennial, I just expect markets outdoors to not have Wi-Fi and therefore I need to have cash. But everyone I've been to of late only takes um, a credit card through their app. Um, like they don't want to have cash on hand. So um, I'm still old school. I would probably still bring both um, just because I wouldn't want somebody to not be able to buy if they were ready to just because I didn't take their method of payment and I didn't have change to break or something. So keep that in mind. Always good to have extra options. If you already have email marketing set up, one thing you might want to think about is having a sign up sheet um, at your table. People don't want to give away their email, but they might if you're doing a drawing for a raffle. I did spend a little bit on this. I don't think I'm going to spend as much next time, but instead of offering like my signed book, which I thought about doing, I offered a different book because I didn't want people to skip buying my book because they might win this, if that makes sense. So um, I bought another book in my genre, Barnes and Noble gift card. I got a bunch of cheap stuff from Timu, but it's it's cute. It's all it's all cutesy little stuff, and so people were wanting to give away their email for a chance to win this. We also decided to offer different products, not really because we were hoping to make some huge profit off of them, but just as more of a hey, come look, we've got a bunch of different things. That's that sort of that sort of mentality. So I was selling my stickers. Um, for like a dollar and my mother-in-law made these bags. I'm going to be honest with you. We really didn't make any sales off of those. So I guess my whole thing is if you're stressed because all you have to sell is your books, don't be. Okay, I love that Harriet had the add-on products. So even if they didn't sell very well, they certainly rounded out the look of her table. Um, now, it's okay if you don't have the extras. That's totally fine. Um, you may decide to add those later and some may be higher or lower margin depending on what items make the most sense for your book and your budget and your audience and all of those things. One thing to consider is if you can get a sort of team to help you while you're selling. Um, I had my husband out there. He was taking payments so I could interact with readers, so I could sign books. I had my mother-in-law was out there. And if you can find someone who's outgoing and isn't afraid of rejection, she was just out there like, hey, do you like to read? Come, um, we have the author here signing copies and um, it's a great book. 
it, and it was awesome because she kind of did a lot of the talking for me. It's really hard to be like, hey, read this book I wrote. It's really great when, of course, we're not objective about our own our own writing. So, um, yeah, that was she was a huge help. They both were. Again, it was an incredible experience for me. I am very optimistic, especially because it was, I was talking to some of the other vendors and they were really disappointed. It was low foot traffic. We just had a hurricane here. People are trying to restock their refrigerators after losing power for days. And so the fact that I was able to sell out makes me very excited and hopeful that I'll be able to have good numbers when I do it again. Um, also, I just kind of had the mindset of if I'm out there, and I have my bookmarks with me, right? With my book on it, with my QR code. I'm reaching a new audience I wouldn't reach on my own, you know, on Instagram and TikTok. And I'm kind of building a local, I don't want to say like fan base, but following, which I hadn't had before. And so I just feel like this is opens up a whole new avenue. So I highly recommend it. And I hope this helps. Now, I had a couple follow-up questions that I sent to Harriet. So she did confirm that the tables at that market were $50 a piece. And I feel like that's a pretty standard price I've seen for a table cost at indoor bookstores, indoor book conferences, um, and then clearly this market. So it seems like $50 is just the going rate. Um, if your local markets charge more or less, let me know in the comments below. Um, now, I did like that Harriet did split her table with a friend who was selling like hair accessories. So I think that's pretty cool. Like people who like hair accessories, maybe didn't know about her book. People who wanted to buy her book, maybe didn't know about the hair accessories. I thought that was a cool way to get some audience crossover. Um, I think you could still do that with another author. Like maybe you write fantasy and your friend in the area writes sci-fi, have a sci-fi fantasy table. Maybe you both write romance, but slightly different uh, subjects genres. So I think that's great to be able to split that cost and hopefully everybody earns more, you make more sales together. So as far as upcoming events for Harriet, now she is going to be at Ink and Indie in Chestertown, Maryland on October 5th, 2024. If you want to go meet her there and buy directly from her, if not, you can just go buy her book, The Trouble with Love and Ink now where you find great books. Um, now she also has a link to her website if you want to sign up for her newsletter and see if she's doing any local events in your area. As for me, my upcoming markets are non-existent. I don't have anything planned. Right now, I'm just focusing on being a mom and then an author. Um, so I just haven't put forth the energy to find local markets um, and really make that part of my strategy. You can still get signed copies from me on my website um, or order a book that you, a book plate for a book you already have of mine to make it a signed book. Um, those are both on my website. What questions do you have? Um, what other questions do you have for Harriet? I can maybe make either a follow-up video or ask her to just reply in the comments. Um, do you want to know more about markets? Uh, what else do you want to see on this channel? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, or hit that shiny new thanks button. That tells YouTube you get value from this information, and then they can get it in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book.